Now, to, today's lesson is our lesson 91 and of the scribe unlocking the prophetic. If you would like to know why it is titled the scribe unlocking the prophetic, you can go back to teachings one, two, and three, and it'll let you know what the meaning of this teaching uh, series is. Today we'll be looking into changing the spiritual atmosphere by redeeming the time of the mystery. Redeeming the time of the mystery. We went from reason to time to redeeming. Now we're bringing all of this into the same equation, which is redeeming the time of the mystery. God's mysteries, God's secrets. God does have secrets, and he does have mystery. The very fact that you're sitting here under the obedience of the gospel of Jesus Christ is because God through his spirit has revealed unto you the mystery of the gospel. It's with that revelation of the mystery of the gospel that you have been given the opportunity to receive this mystery of the gospel into your heart and into your life. But you must understand, this is invitational only. By invitation only is the revelation of the mystery. Now, do I believe that God visits all men? I do. Do I think that he can visit mankind more than once? I do. Do I think that mankind can reject this gospel? I do. But when God gives us revelation, as a prophetic people, I'm hoping that you can bring together now, when God gives revelation, he gives it in his time. Remember, we went over that a few weeks ago about God's timing, how God has a time. So God brings revelation to all of us in his time. Of course, all of this Bible is before you. But unless it's revealed unto you by his spirit, you can't get it. Now you can get head knowledge, but you can't get heart revelation. It's done by the Holy Spirit. So why is it that we want to live our life in, in to unity with the spirit of God? It's because it's the spirit of God that brings us the time of our revelations. Here this morning we're going to get into the redeeming the time of the mystery. Redeeming the time of the mystery. Now in the scriptures, there are many mysteries. There are quite a few mysteries. But then there is a mystery of all time. We'll look at that today and why that's important. God is recovering man's reason. I've been over with you this before, but I keep adding each week to the phrase. God is recovering man's reason and therefore the ability to redeem time of the mysteries of God. Ability to redeem time of the mysteries of God. God's mysteries are revealed in God's timing. God's timing. That's the reason we do not want to get too discouraged if someone doesn't have the same revelation you have. And you also need to be careful and not pass judgment on someone that do, does not have the same revelation as you do. When uh, I'll make a confession, if y'all will keep it a secret. There was a, there's a teaching that came out about the courts of heaven and I immediately had my opinion on it, knowing that I shouldn't have, but I did. And I, I, I even voiced it from here maybe once or twice, just very slightly. And, uh, but each time the Holy Spirit clocked me on it, gave me a correction on it. And now can I stand before you and say that I have the revelation of the courts of heaven? The truth is I do not. But I can also give you a testimony that I got clocked if I, if I raised a flag against it. So it's obvious that somebody's got a revelation there that I don't have. Now, are y'all going to keep that a secret? Thank you very much. 
The reason I'm using myself as an example there in a confession is to show that God brings revelations to his mysteries in his time. And it's important for us to uh, appreciate and receive, even though other people, we, we got to be careful that we understand some people have revelations of mysteries of God that perhaps you do not have. You say, well, Alan, how, how can you, how can you uh, agree with a revelation, whether it's true or not, if you don't have it? It's because I do it by the person who's given the revelation. If I know the person that's given the revelation has a heart of the Spirit, that's following the Spirit, I, I, do, I do what I can. You can trust God in people, right? We can trust each other. But we also need to be honest. And I'm just trying to introduce us to this idea that just because you don't have a revelation that someone else doesn't, you don't have to have an opinion. Now, when I had an opinion, it came out of my mouth. I knew better. I, I was kind of shocked at myself for giving one, but I, I did anyway. Maybe the Lord does want me to use myself as an example. I don't know. But the, but the truth is, perhaps I'll get the revelation or that. If I don't, well, I don't. It's just like I've told you. I've never spoken in tongues. And uh, the moment I say that, then I have ever I get emails and everybody wanting to pat me or, or poke me or something, so I'll speak in tongues, but the truth is, I, I just don't have that one. Now, if I, ever, if I ever get it, you'll be the first to know, I, I promise you. I did have a dream one time that I was preaching, and then in the preaching, all of a sudden, I just started preaching in tongues. I didn't know I was doing it, but everybody else did. And I kept wondering in the dream, what is wrong with everybody? I didn't know what was going on. Now, that could have been the Spirit, or it just could have been my own imagination. But either way, I'm up for whatever God wants, amen, <laughs> in his own mysteries and in his own timing. The important part about revelation of the mysteries of God is to understand that the Holy Spirit gives revelation based on individual people. God doesn't do just a scattering of his revelation, even though he can do that. But for the most part, with the salvation, with the good news or the gospel, it's given, you can, it's, it's when the spiritual atmosphere is so charged with the revelation of the gospel that that mystery of the gospel can be done on a large scale. So why do we, why are we concerned with atmosphere? It's because atmosphere brings into a spiritual timing the release of the revelations of God. Atmospheres bring into a spiritual timing. In other words, you can be guilty by association. Let's say that, let's say that, um, never what a revelation is, let's say of the courts of heaven. Let's say that somebody has that revelation. I do not have that revelation. But if I don't oppose it, I'm for the Spirit of God wanting to do ever what the Spirit of God wants to do. Or let's even say the, the revelation of the gospel of the cross for salvation. Let's say, and if we are embracing uh, truth because we trust each other, and if we trust each other and we embrace it, you can help, we create an atmosphere of a spiritual revelation being downloaded. My personal criticism, because of the lack of my personal experience, can stop a wider range of an atmosphere of given opportunity of revelation. Did you know that? How many apples does it take to spoil a whole bushel? It just doesn't take but one. How much, rap how much strychnine has to be in a bushel of corn to kill you? Just a very little bit. So in spiritual things, we need to understand that we come into unity. To be able to trust each other in the spirit is a, is a wonderful place to be. Uh, the soul automatically wants to oppose because it's got its own opinion. But it's a very uh, restful place to be able to trust the brethren. And you say, well, Alan, what if they're wrong? I'll say it again. It's a wonderful place to be to be able to trust the brethren. Which is more important, trust or being right? 
If we have honest trust for each other and one somebody's wrong, God can cover that. He'll give us revelation. Because our, our fellowship and our relationship in fellowship is what creates the flow of the Spirit. I'd rather be in unity with you on something that's wrong than to have some bad attitude <clears throat> because I know that the revelation will come if we're wrong. I'm hot. I don't know why I've been getting hot up here. But I think I did. I don't know if I'm going to start pulling my coat off for me. I'm all wired up here. <laughs> Thank you very much. Oh, my goodness, I'm all, where am I at here? <laughs> I need revelation. There we go. I guess drinking coffee and all that didn't help. So my point is that there is a tremendous spiritual flow it goes with unity. That's just like the dark side. When it's in unity, it has tremendous power. It has everything to do with, with uh, the flow of the Spirit. Now, so we want to, we have the ability to redeem time of the mysteries of God. To follow Christ is to follow the reason in the time that God created you. Now watch this. You must own where you are in life to have the authority of all time in your time in the light of the mysteries of God. I'm carrying the time thing a step further. In light of the mysteries of God. Now as a prophetic people here, we're going for more revelation. There again, what revelation you have now, if you do not keep a teachable spirit, you will remain where you are. Now you can say there's nothing wrong with that. That's okay. You can remain where you are and be happy and all uh, and everything else. I just advise you not to try to keep everybody else where you are. <laughs> because the rest of us want to move on. And so if you're wanting to fight for where you are, that's okay. But I want to move on. It takes time, and we're adding another word today. It takes time and energy to create movement. Now, we've been talking about the fourth dimension of time. Time is the fourth dimension. Time is that dimension that creates movement. It gives the opportunity for movement. If we, if we had no time, we'd all just be stuck. You've, you heard the terminology. They're just stuck in time, right? Right? It takes time and energy. So we got the fourth dimension, but it also takes energy. What do I mean by that? When you say yes to God with movement, you have just taken fourth dimension and brought it into the third dimension. Now, time is the opportunity. That's what's needed. Time is the spiritual world. But the energy you provide, we say yes to God, and we produce the energy which in turn creates movement. To agree with time speaks things into motion. You cannot just agree with time, you must add energy and create movement. For instance, if you, uh, what in the world changes if there's not movement given to it. We can sit around and learn all the time. But what God's after is for us to learn in time and then give it movement. You see, God, God meets you in the movement. You heard me say before, the Lord says, all right, go speak to that person. You'd say, oh, I don't have any idea what to say. And I've told you, God will give you what to say on your way to the person. If you hadn't got it by then, he'll give it to you when you open your mouth. You see, the movement takes place. What if Jesus just said, all right, God, uh, I believe I need to go to the cross, and so let's just count it done. 
Did it, would it have changed anything in third dimension? No. Jesus had to give movement to the cross. He had to move. And that move, you say, well, Alan, that sounds awful elementary. I know, but we're going with it somewhere. I'm trying to give you the right dimensional understanding of the time and now adding to it the energy. The enemy's constantly trying to get you to spend energy in areas that are not fourth dimensional. In other words, it's the pleasures of life or whatever. Am I into some pleasures of life? I think it's fine. But on the spiritual side, it's a waste of time. That's right. Is it okay? Yeah, of course it's okay. But why do I think I, we've created this? I, I have nothing wrong with people having, getting away and, and all that. I have, I have nothing against that. That's not my point here. My point here is we have created a culture that makes you feel like you've been cheated or deprived of something if you don't get times of pleasure. There is a word for that. We have been given that. When you feel like you've been cheated of time, then something is coming against your spirituality. Your faith makes fourth dimensions real. Now, y'all have seen this before. Uh, we did this video. Now, the fourth dimension is time, and I've shown you how Christ in you, the hope of glory, how Christ is in you, then it comes out of you. You can't tell where the inside and the outside, one leaves and the other one comes. But there's something that causes that fourth dimensional time element to move, and that's called energy. It takes energy applied in time. It takes energy applied in time. That's the reason you can sit behind your desk all the time and read and study scripture, and that's fine. But what God's after is for you to put energy to the time of study. He's wanting that thing to start revolving. Fourth dimension, Christ in you, the hope. He's wanting you to put energy to it. And so it's what we call uh, perhaps ministry or ministering to some. I just call it helping people. When you spend <coughs> fourth dimensional time and energy on others, are you with me? I'm not saying we don't work and make a living. And I hope y'all know what I'm talking about. This is a, as an advanced class. This isn't 101. When you take your time, add energy to it for others, you have a wonderful opportunity of Christ in you, the hope of glory working out of you. The key, see, when you get offended or when you get uneasy or disgruntled, it is when your time is not serving you like you want it to. Now, let's move forward. Let me go to the next slide. There is a time that time is being made full by movement. So I showed you last week how there's a time that time, the fullness of times, and how that time becomes full. But time cannot become full without movement. He, uh, the scriptures speak about there's to be a generation that's ever learning but never coming to the knowledge of the truth. That's because it's not energy is not given to the time, so it will move. Ephesians 1.10. That in the dispensation or the pouring out of the fullness of times, he might gather together in one all things in Christ, both which are in heaven and which are on the earth, even in him. So here we see that in the fullness of times, there is a gathering going on. Is gathering movement. Gathering is movement. Not only is it gathering movement, we see there that this movement's going to be between heaven and earth. God's going to be gathering some things out of heaven and gathering some things on the earth. So that's fourth and third dimensions are going to be working together. 
Do, do we believe that this church can work with heaven? The answer is yes. Do we think that it can be a revolving of heaven and earth? Yes. The answer is yes. Why? Because we believe that this is what the Bible is saying. So if we want to take our time that we are here and, and we want to give over our time to that time, that means that we are in the gathering business. Now, if I talk in farming terms, I can talk about a machine that gathers. A gathering machine in farming is called a harvester. So the gathering that it's speaking about here is gathering things that are in heaven and the earth. So we are in the harvesting business. Is what we're in. We are in the gathering business. We are in the harvesting business. Now, <clears throat> you can say, well, Alan, I think we already know that. I am trying to bring more words, perhaps, to the understanding you already have. And if I can bring you greater understanding of what you already know, I'm hoping that it'll put more energy to what you already know. We are in the gathering business. This is our assignment. Now, as, as Christians and as believers, it is important if we want to be successful in the things of the gathering together that we must consciously know that that's our marching orders. Our marching orders are in the gathering together. And, and how are we to do that? We're to gather them in one. So is it, are we supposed to behave like heaven's there and earth's here? Or are we to behave like heaven and earth are one? We are in a oneness with heaven. I am not to be in oneness with this earth. Uh, consider this. We can have the desire to be accepted by everybody around us. We can have the desire to look like everybody around us. We can dumb down heaven all we want to. But if we're gathering heaven and the earth together, that means we're not going to look like the earth. That's going to be a mixture because I am in my physical body. It's going to be a mixture. But if you think you've got to look and be and act and take on all of the attributes of Babylon to be relevant, you're, in, you're just not, you're not correct. It's incorrect. It's just totally incorrect. People of the earth are hoping there's more than Babylon. I, we want to be as irrelevant as we can be to earth. It is because the world is looking for something that is different. Now, if you are irrelevant, if, if you live a life that's different than the earth, it's a lonely place to be. That's right. Did you know if you live a life that has the elements of heaven mixed in with you, that others are constantly going to try to dumb you down so that you blend in with them? We don't want to blend in with the earth. So therefore, it'll make it a lonely place. If you are being criticized because you are representing heaven, what did you think was going to happen? So what do we do? We'll dumb ourselves down, try to be like the world, and all the world just enough of Jesus. Well, I'm going incognito. I'm going in undercover. No such thing. So what happens when you are leading a charge of the kingdom of heaven upon this earth, criticism is going to hit you in the face every day of your life. Amen. Oh, yes! 
It has to. Because you're different. You're different. You're messing with status quo. You don't look like it. But you'll draw criticism. I'm like, well, why do you want to criticize? Why do you even care? It's because you're... The lost is trying to criticize you to see if you're pure, if you're true or not. To see if you're real. Somebody that knows what they're saying knows where they're headed. And others will follow. Now they're throwing rocks and sticks at you the whole time. But they'll follow. Because the truth of the heart is they're hoping that you're right. Can you hear that? Now, it goes on to say in verse 11, In whom also we have obtained an inheritance, being predestined according to the purpose of him who worketh all things after the counsel of his own will, that we should be, we should what? We should be, I put the word movement there, to the praise of His glory who first trusted in Christ. That we should be. That gives us the idea that we could not be. Should means it's optional. You may be will, you may be won't. If you take the word should off and do be, that's movement. Should be means possible movement. So he says, verses 10 and 11, that we should be to the praise of his glory who first trusted in Christ. Now the question is, where's your should be? It's optional. doesn't mean you have to be. doesn't mean that you are, but it means you should. Now there's a reason that you should. We'll get into that. God's time is always redeeming time to fill up eternity. Wherefore he saith, Awake thou that sleepest. Why does he say to awake? I got the word energy and movement out from that. And arise from the dead, and Christ shall give thee light. Can you see that? Awake and thou that sleepest. That means there's no energy there's no movement. That means you're just sitting around. You're not any good to God, the devil, or anybody. There's no movement. There's no energy. That's the reason Paul said some of you are asleep. You're sleeping. If that's the case, you have no energy. If there's no energy and no movement, there's no fourth and third revolving. It's just not there. Don't think it is. It's in your brain. It's not in your heart. It's not happening. There's no fruit around you. The only thing you do is cause chaos and confusion. And that's on your good day. Now, awake thou that sleepeth. Energy, movement. And arise from the dead. Now, how do you know if you're living in resurrection side of the spirit? You're not dead. Now, that's Christianity 101 there. You're not dead. Now, the enemy is constantly coming against us to make us look as though we're dead. We're to die to selfishness, but to live unto Christ. There's a living nature there. And Christ shall give you light. See then that you walk circumspectively, not as fools, but as wise. Let's go again here. I'm in Walmart. Holy Spirit says, I want you to go talk to that person. I say, God, I have no idea what to say. When you put movement, when you awaken yourself and you arise from the dead, Christ will give you light. Are you with me? You got to have movement. You don't sit on getting the light and then move. You move, put energy to it, and the light comes. Amen. It's the reason the quantum 
spiritual physics of the thing is important. You got to know which comes first, the chicken or the egg. The movement comes first. When did we have pure salvation? After Jesus had movement to the cross. Spiritual light comes after you awake, you add energy to it, and you move, and it'll come. See, everything in life says you've got to prepare before you move. If you're going to move in things of the Spirit, you move, and He prepares you on the way. Amen. Amen. That's right. Best evangelist we got, people have been born again about a week. And then we say, well, give them a little time, they'll settle down like the rest of us. Yeah, that's right, isn't it? God forbid. Now, let's move on. Redeeming the time, because the days are evil. Wherefore, be ye not unwise, but understand what the will of the Lord is. So if I'm going to get the will of the Lord, means I need the light of the Lord. Correct? How do I get the light of the Lord? Is I wake up and I move. And it's in my movement that I get the light to redeem the world. How many of you in here has went somewhere and said, well, God told me to go. I have no idea where I'm going. Come on. That's the way it works. You have no idea where you're going. You, don't, you, you feel just a little stupid, don't you? Like somebody asked me why I'm going. I don't know why I'm going. I'm just, I'm just going. What is that? It's the Holy Spirit. You said yes. You woke up out of your sleep and you started moving. The light will come in your movement because He gives light unto those that move. Why does He give light unto those that move? It's because this thing's got to revolve, fourth and third. It's got to go like this. And it's the movement that brings it. How many of you in here, the Lord said, I want you to get up and go get a flag? Or come up here, I want you to dance before the Lord. Or go back there and dance before the Lord. And you say, well, Lord, when you hit me, I'll go. Now, see, he's already spoke to you. Or you wouldn't have had the thought. You don't ask the question with, who do you think put the question in you? (laughs) You didn't, as Gomer said, you didn't thunk it up. You got the question. The question's an invitation. Will you go? It's an invitation. It's not a question. The devil didn't say it. He doesn't want you to worship God. You didn't think it up. You got more sense. (laughs) So his Holy Spirit gave you an invitation. When will you get the light and the glory after your movement? Why do people who come up here or worship God or whatever with the flag thing or whatever you're doing, why do they keep coming? It's because they have experienced the glory of it or worship. Now, am I saying you got to do that? No, you can do it just sitting there. That's where I'm going to do my time until God changes it, I guess. Quit it, Ray. Now, I've told you all that story before with me in Toronto, and I was going up there to observe laughter, and then in about two or three days, they had to carry, carry me out of Toronto for disturbing the peace. And if you get carried out of Toronto for disturbing the peace, I'm the only one I ever saw that got carried out of Toronto for disturbing the peace. I couldn't, I mean, I was like a, 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 a fire truck or something. I don't know, I hurt my own ears. I was in under the chairs with a coat pulled over my head, and they still couldn't. Yeah. Don't ever go looking for God as an observer. If you do, don't tell God. The only thing I can tell you, he'll make a spectacle out of it. I so am, am appreciative to God that he let it happen in Canada. You will never know how much I appreciate the mercy of God. I, know, knew, I, I knew no one there except Mark Dula, and he was worse than I was. Now, Redeemed. What what is being redeemed? Redeeming this time. Walking wisdom towards them that are without redeeming the time. Now, the reason I did all that other is so you'd understand this verse. 
walk in wisdom toward them. Anybody getting it? You, you're going to walk toward them. You've got to understand the revelation and the light goes, comes in your going. And so you're going to go. I, I, this is a prophetic class. I want everyone of you to, to be so prophetic in here, you'll, you'll follow the Spirit of God. But you've got to understand first, you've you got you to, gotta, I think I've said this before, the, the hardest thing to ever do, whether it's a diet or exercise, or the hardest thing to do is to start. If you just start, the reason it's so hard is because it's a spiritual phenomena. You've got to put movement. So in that movement, I want you just to understand this verse, Colossians 4, 5. Walk in wisdom toward them that are without redeeming the time. So as you walk toward someone, what is God going to give you? Wisdom. He's going to give you wisdom. You don't get all flustered on what you're going to say. You walk to them, carry on the conversation, and since you were obedient to the invitation of the Holy Spirit, wisdom's going to come. Amen. Amen. I don't think he's in here, but he's not, and so I'll say it. There's one guy that comes up here with some flags, and he gets down like this. I'm like, my gosh, he's going to jump on somebody or something. <laughs> Don't know who I'm talking about. I'm not calling no names. He'll get down here like one day. He got and he'll get them flags. Listen, I, there's no doubt in my mind. He has wisdom of revelation of what he's doing. Just just watch it. As a prophetic people, I would love for you to appreciate what you're seeing. We'll we'll do this one day. You can prophetically look at the flags and how they're going and what colors are being used, and you can have an interpretation of the Spirit of what you're seeing. That's right. That's right. That's right. Now, you can do a word by one or two individually. You put them all together, and you got a sentence. <laughs> That's right. Y'all want to do that one day? Would you come back, or you think I'm crazy? <laughs> it's the truth. You have to have a witness in your spirit. It's the truth. Sounds a little crazy up here, doesn't it? <clears throat> but here you have a witness. So as people are worshiping God, as a prophetic people, take note to what you're looking at. Because it has an interpretation. Amen. That's what happens with me with tongues, I think, because I, I tell people I, I, don't have, I don't really have time for tongues because I'm getting interpretations. Somebody speaks in tongues, I can, most of the time I can see it. I can have an interpretation. With, I can see the interpretation. And so I'm so I'm just so taken on the interpretation. I maybe would flag up or tongue up or something if I quit interpreting, but it won't quit. It just keeps here, it comes, and it just keeps coming, and it just keeps coming. The Lord is speaking to us as a prophetic people in a lot of ways. A lot of ways. And we want to be sensitive to that. So we're walking towards, we've agreed, we said yes to the Spirit when it spoke. So we're going to walk. Here comes the wisdom of God. Now, this is what's cool. The wisdom of God comes upon you, and when the wisdom of God comes upon you, the presence of God is there. God's going to redeem their time. Did you hear what I said? God's wanting to redeem their... You're not trying to talk somebody into anything. You're just wanting to be obedient, walk towards them in wisdom, and watch God redeem their times. Yeah. What does redeeming mean? That means you, it means, I think I got it in here. I do, it's the next slide, thank you, Lord. Redeeming is serving to offset or compensate for a defect. <laughs> How you like that one? Redeeming, serving to offset or compensate for a defect. When you go to somebody, God says go to them, you're going to go. And when you go, you're going to go in wisdom. Why? Because God wants to offset their defect. Now, when you do that, you're in the gathering business. <laughs> Can you feel it? I can feel that one. 
You're in the gathering business. You're pulling it together. That that's in heaven and that's, that's, that's on the earth. I just want you to understand and see why the movement is so important. Ephesians 1, 3 through 6 says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who hath blessed us with all spiritual blessings, heavenly places in Christ Jesus, according as He hath chosen us in Him before the foundations of the world. When you walk towards somebody, God gives you wisdom. God's wanting to redeem their time as He saw them before the foundations of the world. You are walking in prophetic history when you walk under the call of God. Can, you, is, can anybody grab hold of what I just said at all? You are walking in prophetic history of God's heart. The history book is God's heart. It's God's desire. It's God's feelings. When you say yes to walk towards someone... Our little simple act, God says, okay, boom, I'm going to give you wisdom because I want to redeem their time. I want to take their defect. I want to do something with it so I can put them back how I saw them before the foundations of the world. Praise God. This is big. This is big. This is big stuff. Redeeming the time is calling people unto whom they are going to be from who you are in the heart of God. Redeeming the time is calling people unto whom they are going to be from who you are in the heart of God. Why does God throw your sin in the sea of forgetfulness? So you can be, God doesn't know what you're talking. See, God is rewinding this whole thing down before the foundations of the earth. He doesn't need your past in His future. Did you get it? I've been talking all morning to say that one line. <laughs> He doesn't need your past in His future. He forgives us, throws it away. He doesn't need it. So what does the enemy do? He's constantly trying to bring it up. Now, Matthew 13 says this, that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by the prophets saying, I will open my mouth in parables. This is Jesus. I will utter things which have been kept secret from the foundations of the world. Amen. Here Jesus starts talking about these mysteries and these secrets. When you prophetically walk towards somebody in Walmart, God sends unto you wisdom. That wisdom is coming out of His vault of His mysteries. That's where it comes from. He says, you'll utter things which have been kept secret <coughs> from the foundations of the world. That's the reason prophetically I know I can be a true prophetic voice if I speak forth things that were kept secret from the foundations of the world. <coughs> now between me and you, I can know what that's going to sound like. It's going to be some pretty good stuff. It's not me telling you prophetically what you're not. It's about me prophetically telling you who God sees you, how you, God sees you in His heart. Amen. Amen. And I promise you something. If you'll call people into who they are in God's heart, it'll happen. The reason most prophetic stuff doesn't come true is because it's not in God's heart. It's in our own ego and pride. We want to see what's in God's heart. Start with this good stuff, pretty good stuff. I think we're going to like it, eternity that is. The greatest revelation of all time. Are you ready for this one? All time. I'm speaking about time here. The greatest revelation 
of all time is the mystery of the church. You say, well, Alan, why is that the greatest? The, myst- the church is a mystery. The church wasn't prophesied about in the Old Testament. The church is what, in, in, in hermeneutics, you call it, the church is a parenthesis in time. It's a secret. It's a mystery. It was just stuck in here. Your very existence is part of a mystery of God that was hidden before the foundations of the earth. Somebody listen to this. Satan didn't know you were coming. He didn't, he didn't know we were going to be here. He's got a mess on his hands if we'd wake out of our sleep. He didn't know you were coming. He doesn't know as much about you as you think. The mystery of the church is the greatest mystery of all time. Now, the church, I'm going to get into a little of it, but it's obvious I can't today. My time's up. The mystery of the church, one of the mysteries of the church, Old Testament, God had a tabernacle. (coughs) Today, in the mystery, God has now got a movable tabernacle's which is us. Before the foundations of the earth, God said, y'all can build me a house over in Jerusalem, Solomon, y'all go ahead, all y'all build me one. But I got a secret I'm not letting anybody know about. I'll go in there for a little bit and it'll be destroyed and all that, but I still got a secret. I'm not ready to release it yet, but Jesus come on the scene and said something. Jesus said that there was a secret, that there was a mystery. This is a great mystery, but I speak concerning Christ and the church. We are a mystery. We're a secret. We're a people that God can say, go talk to that person. You say, oh God, wait a minute, give me about two years to study on what I need to say. He says, no, I'm going to tell you on the way. How can he tell you on the way? I don't have but 15 seconds. It's because it's spiritual information. Comes from fourth dimension. God's time. He downloads it in your spirit. How do you know it's God? Because you almost cry when you get there. The love of God overflows. You can just feel it. You get hot and shaky and tingly all over. And you try to talk and you blubber. <laughs> it's called the spirit of God. person maybe didn't hear what you're saying. Maybe it doesn't make much sense. But they get it. They feel it. That person cares. What they say? I don't know. Is anybody with me? It's called Christ and the church. Christ and you, the hope of glory. It's the love of Christ. Your love precedes what you say. Romans 16, 25. Now to him that is of power to establish you according to my gospel. That's the apostle Paul. And the preaching of Jesus Christ. How? How is he to preach him? According to the revelation of the mystery. Paul said he was going to preach Christ according to the revelation of the mystery. Was he going to preach that Jesus is the Messiah of the Jews? Well, the mystery includes that. But he was going to preach the love of the grace of God to mankind. Jesus said, listen, I've done some stuff that's prophesied, but I'm going to tell you the truth. Y'all are going to do some things that's greater than I've done. What's he done? He has set aflame tabernacles all over the earth with the ability to speak to anyone with divine wisdom and redeem their time. Just, Lord, this thing's huge. We've allowed the world to dumb it down. I'm hot all over and i got to quit. Good news is, Pastor, let me preach next service. So I'm not done yet. <laughs> we're just getting started. So let's stand and we'll pray. And we're going to worship God and we're going to act like we, we don't have no heavenly sins.
Lord Jesus, it's our prayer that you'd fill us with your spirit. Lord, you know our deal. If there's anything that I've said that's not true, I pray that it'll fall to the ground. Everybody will give me grace and just overlook it. But Lord, if there's anything that I've said that's true and of your spirit, I pray that it'll quicken it to our hearts. It'll come alive. Lord God, I pray that we would be a church that moves so that you might speak to us. We might move so the power and revelation of your wisdom might come upon us. I pray, oh God, that this church would be known for redeeming the time of lost humanity in sickness, in salvation, in brokenness. Let this church be known as the redeeming church. All that's broken, come to new life because they're in the redeeming business. This church, let it be known that it is redeeming the time of lost humanity. Be with us, O God. Give us courage, O God. Give us courage to be that that you saw us to be before the foundations of the earth. New life was seen in your heart, O God. And as a church, we proclaim and we, re we request that new life would live up to the fullness of how we are in your heart. Not our hearts, not in our ideas, but in your heart. Rewrite our whole script, O God. Just help us, O God, to be in your script, your heart. Give us courage. Give us courage. Give us courage. In Jesus' name, amen and amen.